Hi, and welcome back. I'm very excited for today's video. I am going to be showing you guys a little bit more about me. Um, I'm going to be showing you my background, where I'm from, and some of the experiences that I've had leading up to where I am now so that you guys can get to know me a little bit better. I grew up in Los Angeles, California. My family and I lived in a small suburban area about 30 minutes outside of the city. We would always be in the city for one of my modeling shoots or castings as a kid. I grew up in the industry, so I've been modeling since before I can remember. What is your name? Uh, Say Nikayla. Oh, and how old are you, Nikayla? Um, six. How old are you? Um, two. Two. During my childhood, there was always something going on, I felt like. We were always either going to one of my brother's many sports practices or games, or we would be going to one of my sister's acting auditions or on one of her sets. A uh, singer and an actress. <laughs> I continued modeling until my parents got divorced and I moved in with my mom full-time. She had to get a full-time job to support us, so she couldn't take me to my castings anymore until I turned 16 and I could get my own car. I got my driver's license, I signed with an agency, and I started modeling again. My work schedule started to get really hectic. So senior year, I decided to be homeschooled so that I could work full time. And during that time, my agency asked me to go to New York. Um, I dislike is when people look at me and they judge or assume things when they don't know anything about me. <laughs> at 17, I moved out and was fully supporting myself, living with roommates at the time. From then, I moved back to New York and I was bi-coastal for about five years living in LA and New York. When I first moved back to New York, I moved into a model's apartment, which is an apartment set up by your agency that holds girls from all over the world. It's kind of like a dorm room, so I think I stayed in my first model's apartment for about six months. Living in a three bedroom with eight girls and one bathroom was not ideal for me. <laughs> so I moved out as soon as I could. I saved up enough money to sublet my first apartment in East Village. It was a third floor walk up, which after moving in, I immediately knew I was never going to do again. <laughs> I would have to walk up those stairs with my groceries every single time and every single time I did it I would think, okay, I'm never going to have a three-story walk up again. And I didn't. I literally didn't. I couldn't do it. Not to mention the 10 block walk that I would have to take with my groceries before walking up the three stories. I mean, hey, it is what it is. That's New York, right? I was able to travel all over. I ended up living in London for a month and staying in another model's apartment, but that one was much bigger. It was a big house. It was really nice, and I got to explore London even though it rained every single day. I absolutely loved the city. I continued to travel and ended up moving around New York a lot. I lived in so many different areas in New York from East Village, Long Island City, Chelsea, Kipps Bay, Murray Hill, <laughs> Alphabet City, the list goes on. <laughs> I've had a lot of apartments, let me just say that. <laughs> I was having a hard time integrating with the busyness of the city. As most of you know, New York is the busiest city in the US, I believe and it could be daunting at times having to walk everywhere in the snow, in the cold. I'm from California, I'm not used to the snow, so the first time I experienced it, it was beautiful. It's so beautiful outside right now. It's snowing a little bit, if you can see. The streets are 
completely empty. I feel like I'm the only person in the world right now. After the third, fourth, fifth time, I was like, okay, I know what snow is. I don't, I don't really need to go in it again, do I? <laughs> so I decided to move out of my studio apartment in Chelsea and I moved back to LA. And at that time, I ended my relationship that I was in for six years. So I was entering this new chapter of my life where I was discovering who I was without anyone else, without being in a relationship. However, my outlook at that time wasn't that positive. I didn't feel like I was at the place where I wanted to be in my career. And from the years of being in the industry, my self-confidence really took a hit. I found I was comparing myself to everyone around me, to other models, comparing my career path to those that have made it bigger than me, per se, and I let that get to me. So I lost a lot of confidence in myself. I wanted to get out of this dark place that I was mentally, and I felt like 2020 was gonna be my year. I was going to do more shoots, I was going to be more active on social media. I'm going to start doing this new thing where I uh, talk on my Instagram stories. And really take more risks to see what would happen for me. And then five months later, COVID hit. I got to spend a lot of time with my family, which I hadn't had before because I was always traveling and I was always working. But then five months later, my family and I experienced a tragic loss. In July of 2020, my sister Naya passed away. And when that happened, I was in complete shock. My whole family was in complete shock. It was like someone pulled the rug from under us and we didn't see it coming. The dark place that I was in before only progressed when that happened. At that time, I had no thoughts of my future. I had no thoughts of myself, really. I was only just experiencing pain. I realized that the pain that I was experiencing wasn't going to go anywhere until I decided to find the good in this world. So from then on, I went on this journey of discovering who I was. I started by quitting my vape that I had been smoking for two years. I had picked it up in New York and I knew that it was because of stress. And I was doing it so much that I wanted to stop immediately. But I kept buying them over and over again because I had such an attachment to that. And quitting that was really hard, but when I did, I felt so empowered. I felt like I could do anything after that. I picked up journaling and started writing about my feelings. I started therapy. I said no to doing a lot of things that I didn't want to do, but normally would for other people. I started putting myself first. I became mindful and observed how I felt each day. I started asking myself the tough questions of what's stopping me from being myself, what past hurt am I still holding on to, and why am I not living like every day is a gift, because it is. When I started answering all of those questions honestly to myself, and I stopped the act, I stopped lying, I stopped pretending, I found myself. I can say that I am a completely changed person. Before, I looked at life like it was a burden because of small, minute things that, in the grand scheme of things, don't matter. Now I look at life for what it is, an opportunity to show the world who you are for your authentic self and nothing less. They say we only have one life, so live it but I feel like we only have one day. We only have this one moment. The next moment is not promised. So live this moment like you stole it.